so this this project is when did we start this project yeah. and didn't we play the second quartet in 2014 i think so yeah we were supposed to do it in 2014 yeah yeah it got postponed so yes we did it in january 2015 yeah, that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. In a got postponed, <laughs> not COVID postponed, but you know, weather Storm. postponed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I think uh, his pieces really benefit from playing them live, although the recording will be absolutely amazing. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, they, you know, there's something special that happens. And so maybe it changes the next time we play a different one. Actually, the first quartet is also so atmospheric. We've played it, what, maybe three times in a concert or more, maybe four or five times. And it's always very special. It's um, different each time. So it's right, he, he's really a storyteller and, and the performer really can enjoy that. And he is in this Icelandic tradition of, of telling stories. And he loved the old sagas and he knew all the characters. The, the, the later quartets, the third and the fifth, their form is, is really beautiful and they are they tell a story. It was a, such a nice experience to record all these five string quartets and what stands out is how different they all are like and they expand like 50 years of his life in Icelandic music and uh, yeah for me it was just so amazing how how, how how different how unique each quartet was and you had to it was like a, a new world you have to enter, like with each quartet. He was in general like a very versatile composer, and he, he composed, of course, his catalogue is, is endless, with chamber music, solo pieces, theatre music, operas, symphonies, big, big, huge symphonies. When I started in the symphony orchestra more than 20 years ago, I uh, had my share of that, and, and, uh, and as a, a young, very ambitious player, uh, I... Uh, yeah, I suffered a little bit, I have to admit. <laughs> and there are passages there that are <laughs> quite unplayable. Uh, Atli has had so much influence on Icelandic music life and cultural life. He was very f fond of, of literature and influenced by it as well. And uh, he, was, he was this big personality. Atle Heimer's family was from Flatey, this small island in Breiðafjörður, 
uh, between uh, Snæfellsnes Peninsula and the West Fjords. He was very fond of that place, Flate, and so many of his compositions were completed there. <laughs> With Atli and his versatility, I think also in Icelandic music life, because he has been teaching also a lot, and, and all the young composers that, uh, that uh, are now writing, uh, a lot of them were lucky enough to meet Atli and learn something from him. And, and his influence goes beyond, of course, learning directly from him, also just the impact he had on, on Icelandic music. He was the founder of Dark Music Days in 90, 1980. And, um, and that's why it's also because of that reason that we like to combine his pieces with, uh, you know, with the young composers and uh, our own composers. He was such a vivid personality mm -hmm. and so alive and his music stayed alive and, and you know, he, he was constantly revising his pieces and whenever you would ask him, how would you like that? He would, like, he would always ask back, how would you like it? Yeah. And he liked the... The, the creation and the conversation and the ongoing yeah. uh, creation of, of, of sound and music and, and you know. Yeah. My favorite quartet is the second one because it had such a great impact on me. It was like the first, uh, like, yeah, it was the biggest piece that we played by him. And I just remember the process so well and I remember this concert vividly also because of the storm and all this. And we were, at the same time, we were... Uh, premiering a piece by Una. There's a famous story about Atli buying the, or getting the score of Shostakovich's last string quartet in a basement in Moscow and smuggling it uh, to Iceland. Yes, exactly. Which was played then in the first dark music days, wasn't it? Yeah. Thanks, Atli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, for making us a better quartet. <laughs> Thank you.